टॉपिक इज शॉर्टेस्ट जॉब फर्स्ट और यू कैन से शॉर्टेस्ट जॉब नेक्स्ट सो एज अ नेम सजेस्ट वॉट इज द फंडा इन द शेड्यूलिंग एल्गोरिदम आउट ऑफ ऑल द अवेलेबल प्रोसेस और यू कैन से आउट ऑफ ऑल द प्रोसेस हु आर इन वेटिंग स्टेट इट सेलेक्ट्स अ प्रोसेस हैविंग शॉर्टेस्ट बर्स्ट टाइम टू एग्जीक्यूट नेक्स्ट एंड टू वर्जन ऑफ दिस टाइप ऑफ शेड्यूलिंग एल्गोरिदम इज देयर वन इज प्रियमटिव प्रियमटिव एंड नेक्स्ट वन इज नॉन प्रियमटिव डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू इज सी इन नॉन प्रियमटिव वंस वन सी पी यू हैज बीन अलोकेटेड टू अ प्रोसेस दैन दैट प्रोसेस कैन नॉट बी फोर्सफुली रिमूव फ्रॉम द सी पी यू टिल द टर्मिनेशन ऑफ दैट प्रोसेस फाइन एंड इन प्रियमटिव वी कैन रिमूव दैट प्रोसेस फ्रॉम सी पी यू बेस्ड ऑन सम टाइम क्वांटम और प्रायोरिटी बेसिस ओके दैट इज प्रियमटिव वी कैन फोर्सफुली रिमूव दैट प्रोसेस फ्रॉम सी पी यू सो सी uh when uh, you are you are asked a question uh, then uh, they specify that you have to apply sjf with preemption okay and if simply they write solve this problem with shortest job first algorithm then by default you have to use what which mode that is non preemptive mode fine and the preemptive mode of this algorithm is also known as shortest remaining time first srtf or you can say shortest remaining time next fine if in numerical or in question you are given that uh, solve this problem with shortest remaining time first cpu scheduling algorithm then by default shortest remaining time first means you have to apply what technique preemptive this one is preemptive so you have to apply preemption method fine and if nothing is given preemptive non preemptive and sjf is given then by default it is known as non preemptive okay now in this video we will discuss the non preemptive version of this algorithm okay see uh, and the uh, some drawbacks are also there of this algorithm but uh, i'll discuss the drawbacks in next video after discussing this algorithm also srtf also so uh, in next video i'll discuss srtf and both uh, you know the advantages and drawbacks of both the versions preemptive and preemptive and non preemptive okay so let us take one example if two or more processes are given with same burst time then what will you do uh, see the funda is you have to choose a process with minimum burst time but if two processes are having same burst time one and one you can say then then you will apply first come first serve to break the tie so first of all we will draw what gantt chart and here we will start the cpu time from zero see this one is this this is very important to solve this numerical if you you have drawn this gantt chart properly and correctly then almost 90% of your work has been done fine see now time is zero now at uh, check out at zero at uh, time zero is there any process which has come in ready state out of these processes yes we have this process because the arrival time of this process is zero so at time zero we have only one process that is p4 see you cannot say that uh, directly you jump to this burst time and check out the burst time see uh, shortest burst time is 1 and 1 so if both are same if two processes are uh, having same burst time then use fcfs fcfs means p1 so you can write p1 no see that is not right because you cannot allocate cpu to either p1 or p3 why so because see p1 arrival time of p1 is 2 arrival time of p3 is p3 is 4 so these two processes has not come yet in ready state at time 0 see out of all the available processes fine now at time 0 which process is available you have to check first of all check the arrival time only one process that is p4 so you have no other choice you have to allocate the cpu to this process p4 although the burst time of p4 is 6 which is the largest burst time out of these processes but you have no other choice because at time 0 only p4 is there in ready state no other process has come so you have to allocate cpu to p4 and till burst time of this process is 6 so this process would require 6 unit of time for completing its execution so here you will write 
as it is non preemptive mode we are discussing the non preemptive mode so in between the execution you cannot remove this process from cpu because this is non preemptive see here the assumption is no process would require any io device only cpu bound processes we have taken now at time 6 you have to check out which process has come now this has come uh, 2 at time 2 1 4 and now this one is done and p5 so all the processes has been arrived so you can say in our ready queue now we have p1 also p2 also p3 also and p5 also all the three processes in ready queue now you have to apply the funda of sjr now you have to select a process having shortest burst time because we have all the processes out of all the available processes you have to pick fine now see two processes are having same burst time because one is the minimum one so p1 is also having one and p3 is also having one now there is a tie now to break the tie you you have to apply what fcfs fine first come first so now check out the arrival time of these two processes one and one having burst time now which come uh, first p1 has come at time 2 and p3 came at time 4 so according to first come first serve cpu would be allocated to p1 because 2 is less than this 4 so p1 has come before d3 so cpu would be allocated to p1 okay and now till what time check out the burst time that is 1 so it require only one unit of time 6 to 7 now p1 has been terminated now in ready queue uh, how many processes are there three processes p2 p3 and p5 now again apply the same funda pick the process having minimum burst time which one is having minimum burst time this one one out of p2 p3 and p5 out of these remaining three one is minimum so we'll pick p3 and 7 to Eight. Now P three is also done. Now out of remaining P two and P five, five is smaller than sorry three. Three is smaller than five, so we'll pick what P five. And burst time is three. Now you'll write here what eleven. Now the remaining is only P two, and this would be sixteen. Okay. now see uh, you you see the gain chart is there any uh, uh, time when the pro, when the cpu was idle no from 0 to this uh, 16 every every time the cpu was busy doing some processing fine so in this case if cpu is not idle uh, from starting to ending this total 16 should be equal to this total of this burst time 6 plus 3 9 Ten, fifteen, and sixteen. So this total is also sixteen, and this is also sixteen. Then you can say, you can verify it uh, by this also. Okay. But in the last numerical, we have discussed that at one particular time CPU was idle for one one unit of time. So here this and this would not be same in that case. Uh, you have to uh, take care of this thing also. so if cpu was not idle uh, from the starting point to the ending point then you can say this the whatever you will get at uh, this point it last then that this would be equal to the total of the burst time given burst time okay now we are we will calculate all the average waiting time average turn around time response time and all okay now first of all completion time now completion uh, completion time is what at the time where uh, when the process has been completed now the uh, completion time of p1 is what 6 uh, sorry 7 because at 7 p1 has been completed and terminated for p2 it's 16 for p3 it's 8 for p4 6 for p5 11 See, do do not use uh, do not write this time for P five because at this time CPU has been allocated to P five, and at eleven in this P five has been terminated. So we are taking the completion time of that process eleven. Okay, 
now turn turn around time now what is the turn around time completion time minus arrival time that is known as turn around time or you can say waiting time plus burst time now we have both completion time and arrival time 7 minus 5 7 minus 2 that is 5 16 minus 1 15 8 minus 4 4 6 minus 0 that is 6 11 minus 2 that is 9 this is the turn around time now find out the waiting time waiting time would be what see turn around time you can say waiting time plus burst time then waiting time would be turn around time minus burst time turn around time this one this one is burst time 5 minus 1 Four, fifteen minus five, ten. Four minus one, three. Six minus six, zero. Nine minus three, six. Okay. Now next is response time. Now response time is what? See the time at which CPU has been allocated to the process first time after the arrival of that process. Okay. Now check out response time for P one. For P one. At what time CPU has been allocated to P one first time? First time at time six. And at what time the P one has come in ready state? Check out the arrival time for P one. That is two. So response time would be six minus two. That is four. <clears throat> for P two, check out at eleven CPU was allocated to this P two first time eleven, and uh, the arrival time of P two is. One so response time is so the process has been waiting because at one the process has come to ready state but CPU has been allocated to the to this process at time eleven so during this time the process was waiting that is eleven minus one that is ten for P three seven minus four that is three for P four zero minus zero that is zero and for P five eight minus two that is six. And in previous video, I have also told you the rule is, if the algorithm is non-preemptive, then the waiting time and response time would be same. Here you can check four ten three zero six four ten three zero six. Okay. Now I hope you can easily calculate the average waiting time and average turnaround time. So average turnaround time would be seven point eight, and average waiting time would be four point. Six, okay. So that was the uh, non-preemptive version of shortest job first. Next video we'll discuss the preemptive version of shortest job first, as well as the drawbacks and advantages of this algorithm. Okay. Till then, bye bye. Take care.